Nice ears, Dumbo. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Waves. This is Ben, our captain. One day he convinced me to go along with him on an adventure of buying a sailboat, Kiana, and taking her on ventures through the Pacific Northwest and hopefully beyond. <laughs> I'm Allie, by the way, first mate. <laughs> oh, and this is Bruce, our grass eating, ocean swimming, sand rolling boat dog. Thanks for coming with us as we experience the highs and lows and all the adventures of boat life. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe. Enjoy. Oh my god. Oh, I can't believe this is a thing right now. All right, we are in Comox. Uh, and this is maybe going to be our last day before we head up to Desolation. So Bruce and I are in charge of getting an episode out. So we're going to have to try and find some Wi-Fi. And then maybe a couple more provisions and then Maybe, maybe we'll be getting a generator today. With Ben working from the boat, we're just, our batteries aren't staying high enough because we're not doing a whole lot of motoring, which is kind of great. But, so we're, uh, we're gonna have to get a generator and then so that we can keep the batteries topped up and I might have to pick up that today. So, you guys can come with me. later 50 bucks later I'm back at the boat and the video is up uh, I'm gonna take Bruce to shore and let him let him play with the football a bit before we we head up to desolation Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it is nine o'clock. We were supposed to be up at around six, but the alarm went off and then it, I Ben just turned it off. <laughs> so it's supposed to be a uh, building today, wind from the south. Uh, we have a current right now until about 11. <laughs> so we're probably not gonna get much of it, but the wind is building from the south today. It's gonna get bigger and bigger, I think up to about 17 knots. Uh, so we'll have to reef as we go and just work with it, but we're gonna catch this wind all the way up to Lund Maybe Savory Island. We uh, have never surfed Savory Island before But it's got a beach and it's facing south and the wind is gonna kick up some current So we're thinking we might get lucky enough to catch some wind swell at Savory Island uh, We'll swing by it anyway 
uh, and then we'll end up uh, anchoring in Lund, which is just the beginning of Desolation Sound today. So uh, we're catching this wind all the way up to Desolation, and then the sun comes out tomorrow, and we should just start cruising through the mountains. So I would have liked to explore a little bit more, but you know, Desolation calls it. When the wind comes, you gotta catch it. So it's cool living this lifestyle where the wind is just like pushing you around. Also, I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but whenever we're like, whenever we have a pretty rough sail, our water tanks get like shaken up like this. I don't know if you can see that, but that is not clear water. That is very, very murky. So uh, there's a bunch of sediment in the bottom. And I guess when we go on like pretty wavy sails, it just kicks up all the sediment and it gets like tossed around in the tanks. And then, I don't know, I don't really like drinking it for the next day or so until it calms down. Uh, does anybody else have this problem? And if so, how did you fix it? Because I don't know how to get, it's like physical sediment. I don't know how to get it out of the tanks. And we don't have access ports to clean it. The only access ports, actually, I'll show you. This is the spine. Or right there. And like obviously I'm not going to undo that because it would just let out so much water into the bilge and into the boat. Yeah, then it, and then if we empty the tanks all the way, it doesn't it doesn't bring the sediment out with it. It so the sediment will just always stay in the bottom of the tanks. It's kind of annoying. So, yeah, if anybody of you know how I can fix that, help a girl out. Thank you. How fast are we going? We're doing 6.3 knots on a beam reach, heading across the strait. We're headed just south of Savory Island right now. And yeah, it's perfect. I bet you it's maybe 10 knots of breeze. Yeah, lovely. She's doing well. It's a nice sail today. Favorite, favorite point of sail is beam reach on this boat. Doing like 7.6 knots now, we're just flying along. Uh, but the wind is supposed to pick up to like gusting to 25, and we're gonna start going against the current soon. So we're just hoping we can get as far as we can under these conditions, and then we're expecting it to get a little rough later today. But hopefully, you know, we only got 20 miles to go, so hopefully, we can kind of race ahead of all that. In today's episode of Tying Knots with Ali Mancuso, if you don't know knots, tie lots. <laughs> <laughs> Figure eight, aka stop or not. Ta da! Looks you, like a square, doesn't it? What do you use that for? I don't know. Number three. You know you're going fast when you feel the boat slow down and it's still doing seven and a half knots. <laughs> Bowling. If you don't know a bowling, get off my boat. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? So we just threw a, a reef in the main. Oh, we were both kind of disappointed because we were like, oh, we're going like 8.2 knots or something, and it's fun, like, but you know, safety first, and it's supposed to get quite heavy. We can see the white caps and the waves coming at us. So we put in a reef, and we're now we're going 8.4. I don't really understand how we're going fast here with a reef in, but this is a great boat, and this is a great day of sailing. Point six on film. Woo! Anyways, we're gonna take out the reef, go on a little bit more of a broad reach, and just cruise on past Savory, head up into Desolation. So we averaged about 8.2 knots across the street really fast. We did it for like three hours. Got 
definitely, I would say, the fastest we've ever sailed for a long distance. Ah, shit. That's why it won't roll in. I hope I have a spare one of those. So our jib sail is stuck up right now. We Our pin broke, as I showed you. Um, so we can't roll it in. The wind is supposed to be getting bigger, so Ben's trying to find a new pin. I don't think we have any, or just finding like a shackle or something that we could use until, until we get it down. Um, I'm kind of thinking we should maybe pull into an anchorage and just pull the whole sail down because the the sheet is like really uh, really like birds nesty around the drum now because when we were trying to roll it in, always something, hey. So this is the part that, the pin that normally goes through right here. That pin disappeared and then the tack of the jib sail wasn't connected to the rolling furler anymore. So like I was able to sort of release the drum a little bit, like I was able to get that, the bind released. And then I just used a, like a stainless steel carabiner where that pin used to connect and another shackle and then try it again and it reeled in fine so we're good now it would have been a huge pain in the butt if we had to take the sail down in this kind of wind we were really hard so i'm glad it worked out we still never went below seven knots <laughs> throughout all we're that still flying even with just the main on so we'll probably jive now and head towards desolation It wouldn't be this addictive if there wasn't something exciting in every sail, am I right? <laughs> I was just having a little moment or a thought to myself that when I was gifted a boat a few years back, a Catalina 27, an old rundown boat, um, I remember the guy that gifted it to me at the time, he's like, oh yeah, we sailed it all around the place, like Gibsons and even over to Nanaimo, and at the time I thought, well, that sounds crazy. <laughs> and just like, at that point, when I took over that boat, I remember thinking to myself, if I ever get this boat to Desolation Sound, I'll have done really well. And I never did get that boat to Desolation Sound. It ended up having a fire and it was an insurance claim. Um, but yeah, I'm coming into Desolation Sound now, years later, and it's sort of like, a, I made it. <laughs> So we're heading into Desolation Sound here and there's actually like four or five other boats doing the same thing. It is a Saturday in July, so no surprise there. Uh, this is one of the most popular and most sought after cruising destinations in Canada, probably in the Pacific Northwest even. So it's usually really, really crowded um, with lots of boaters, but because the border with the United States is closed right now, there's probably going to be like half as many boaters as normal or it's going to be a good summer yep yep yeah <laughs> So I had to dig out the old rain jacket because it's freaking winter in July. <laughs> but it's all good. We're going to get the dinghy off. I don't know what Allie's doing right now. She's, <laughs> Modeling. A, she's been in a very weird mood for quite some time. 
<laughs> we're gonna drop the dinghy, drop the engine on the dinghy, go into the store before it closes, and I'll probably buy a bag of chips, <laughs> something like that. Maybe a new pin for a drum yeah. or a jib if drum. Have, I don't know if they're gonna have that kind of stuff here. We might have to go to Scroll Cove. And that's it. That's the plan. <laughs> How cute are you? <laughs> Dream <laughs> come true. Aww. With the surfboard on the side like that. Not that we're surfing yet, but... One day. This is the land. You're such a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> we were planning on using Refuge Cove as a jumping off point while we'd explored Desolation Sound. It had a general store, wooden boardwalks, moorage, fuel, laundry, ice cream, coffee, and a whole lot more. There's about 20 families that live there year round, and it has a real feel of an old pioneer village. Even though we had already gone further than we had planned that day, we were super excited to finally be in Desolation Sound and really just wanted to wake up somewhere cool. So after we'd had a little break on land, we set off to find an even better anchorage that we could wake up in. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that episode. Uh, we're really excited to show you our next episode where you stop in at Tenedos. Not to give away any surprises, but um, we also want to give a real quick shout out to Jason Heiss. And David Coons. Our new patrons. Thank you so much for coming aboard. Uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, also, we were kind of thinking that maybe we would incorporate a Q&A. A couple people have been asking us, so uh, if anybody wants to send us in in the comments below some questions that you might have for us, we can try and incorporate those in some future episodes. Tell all. I know all the questions are going to be for Allie, and she has to answer them, so just... I do? We have whatever the questions are. Top five. We'll pick five questions. And, I, and Allie has to answer them. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but we do release episodes on the 1st and the 15th of every month, so make sure you hit the bell uh, and don't miss the next episode that comes out on the 1st. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell! I was waiting for you to do it. I can't get high enough.